Hello and welcome back to Dukascopy TV. We've got another exclusive interview lined up for you. Small and mid-cap firms have historically outperformed larger conglomerates. Anik Bold of BCGE is in the studio now to discuss that with us a little bit further. Anik, thank you so much for coming in today. Hello Natalie, thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. Now, why is it that small and mid-cap firms continue to outperform the larger companies and, and also in a period at present where the startup company really is king, does it still remain easier for smaller firms to, to multiply their capitalization versus larger conglomerates? Yeah, it is true that those companies have generated better returns than large cap. The companies that compose the Swiss small and mid cap index uh, are generally more dynamic. As a matter of fact, they are all generally sorry, um, active in a niche market where they have a leading position and where the growth is stronger. Uh, while larger companies are predominantly active in mature markets where it's more difficult to gain market share and to expand uh, business. Uh, to answer your question about um, startup, it's true that we don't really invest in startup. The company we're focusing on are more of a certain size. But you're right, I guess it's easier for smaller company to double their market capitalization than it is for larger companies because of economies of scales. And else also larger company um, have more difficulty to grow through merger and, and acquisition, sorry, because um, of antitrust rules. So yes, it is indeed uh, easier. And um, I think that being a small company gives you more flexibility. That means mm, success. Yeah, ultimately, you have greater scope there. Yes, exactly. Well, if what is your, your breakdown criteria then when you are considering a new company to add to the fund? And also, what would have a company ruled out? We use what is called a triple bottom line approach. That means that when assessing a company, we uh, uh, analyze it from a financial point of view but we also add socio-economic and environmental criteria in our analysis. Um, each analysis is conducted through a questionnaire um, consisting in more than 150 questions that allows us to compare the company among them. At the end, we base our investment decision um, on the ranking each company obtained during this uh, analysis process. And at the end, we choose the best 25 companies. It's worth mentioning that we are very long-term investors. As such, a decrease in sales growth or margins for one or two quarters is by no means uh, a motivation for selling a stock. The only rationale for selling a stock is a ranking that, that is not sufficient anymore according to our methodology. Now, well, one of the, the benefits of Swiss secondary stocks is greater room for diversification. Are, is there some level of client preference at present in terms of sort of sectors and industries? And, and how does that work to subsequently weight the fund? OK, we don't um, manage according to um, sectoral criteria. The sector allocation is only the result of the stock picking. But according to our methodology, usually we favor um, industrial stocks and medtech stocks because in the Swiss economy, you find there very, very interesting and dynamic companies. So we are overweight in, indus in industrial and in healthcare companies, but that's only the result of the stock picking. You touched there on the Swiss economy. In your, in your view, how does small and mid cap investment benefit the, the real Swiss economy? Those companies are very, very innovative and that is their strength. Um, you have to remember that um, thanks to their innovative leadership, they've been able in the past few years to maintain their market share even with a very um, high Swiss francs. And also they are very well implemented in an international markets and most of the time they generate a vast majority of their sales outside of Switzerland. So they are benefiting from the, the, the dynamism of the world economy. Even if a lot of them have relocated their production abroad Switzerland to be close to their clients, um, usually the 
R and D, so the research and depart uh, research and um, development department, and the production of um, um, value-added products are still in Switzerland. So uh, all this contributes to the development of the real Swiss economy. Anik, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Anik Bo there of BCGE. For more exclusive interviews with industry leaders, stay tuned to Dukoscopy TV. Goodbye.